Welcome back to Queen the Greatest, a journey through some of Queen's most extraordinary songs, performances and achievements. This week, we celebrate what is undoubtedly one of Queen's greatest hits, the gospel-inspired masterpiece, Somebody to Love. Somebody, Ooh, somebody, somebody, can anybody find me? Somebody to love. Having set such a high benchmark with their A Night at the Opera album, fans were eager to see what Queen would come up with next. But as ever, the band refused to stand still and were intent on trying new things. And for somebody to love, Freddie found inspiration from one of the world's finest singers to create this unique Queen moment. I mean, we had the same three people singing on the big choir sections, but I think it had a, a different kind of technical approach because, I mean, it was a sort of gospel way of singing, which I think was different to us. And this is me sort of going on about Aretha Franklin, and sort of made him go a bit mad. I just wanted to write something in that kind of thing. I was sort of incensed by the, the sort of gospel approach that she had on her albums, in the mm. earlier albums. Mm. Although it might sound the sort of same kind of approach on, say, the, the, the harmonies, it is very different in the studio because it's like a different kind of, how should we, it's a different range. Yeah, Freddie wanted to be Aretha Franklin. You have to bear this in mind, and that explains everything. He loved Aretha, and... Um, this was his gospel uh, epic. It kind of followed in the steps of Bohemian Rhapsody in the sense that we were building up these multiple vocal parts, but this time we were being a gospel choir instead of being a sort of English choir. And um, Freddie came in very well prepared with a lot of a lot of vocal parts, and we just worked our way through them. Yeah, it was a very good feeling. I, I always remember thinking, yeah, this is uh, this is going to be something great. Somebody, ooh, somebody. For many, Bohemian Rhapsody was the greatest song Freddie ever wrote, but according to the man himself, he didn't necessarily agree. People will obviously, no matter how um, hard you try, will think of in terms of your past hits, that's inevitable. But I think it's up to the group and the musicians to really uh, think in other terms. From my point of view, I mean, as far as the writing side of it was concerned, I really thought, I, I said, okay, Bohemian Rhapsody, big hit. But as far as my writing abilities were concerned, I think I could write better anyway. Mm. And I just looked at it and, uh, from that point of view. I mean, I just went and wrote, from my estimation, I think a song like Somebody to Love mm. is, in my estimation, a better sort of, uh, from the writing aspect, a better song, mm. you see. Frustratingly, Somebody to Love just missed out on the top spot in the UK charts, peaking at number two. But it quickly became a powerhouse on stage, as witnessed by this performance at the Milton Keynes Bowl in 1982. Years later, at the Freddie Mercury tribute concert, the song had its place firmly cemented in Queen history, thanks to this unforgettable performance by Brian, Roger, John, the London Gospel Choir, and of course, George Michael. The song's subsequent inclusion on the Five Live EP release saw it finally top the UK charts in 1993. A truly greatest hit. Be a big man someday, you got mud on your face. 
you big disgrace, kicking your can all over the place, singing, we, we 